In this video, we're going to take everything we've learned in the course and the assets that we've been working on and we're going to create a Unity scene from scratch. Now, back in chapter one, I had a video that detailed the process of setting up Unity to work with PBR. And so during the process of creating the scene, we're going to run back through that, but we're going to move a little faster in this video. So here, let's go to File, New Scene. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do with this is just make sure that my project settings are correct. So let's go to Edit, Project Settings, and let's go to Player. And here you can see that my color space is already set to linear and I'm using this single light so uh, my rendering path here is set to forward. Here on my camera I'm going to enable HDR and I've already changed my quality settings uh, as I discussed in chapter one. So here let me just uh, show that once more. So if we go to project settings quality, uh, here I just left this at the fantastic setting. But I came into the anti-aliasing and I disabled this. So for HDR to work on the camera, you have to have this anti-aliasing setting disabled. Again, this was discussed in more detail in chapter one. Okay, so here we have our camera. Let's now set up our environment. So we'll go to our lighting tab and you'll notice the skybox is just using this default skybox. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import in a spherical HDR map that I'm going to use. So here in the materials textures folder, I'm just going to right click and import a new asset. I'm going to use one of the environments that ship with Substance Painter. So you can get this, you can just go to the program files, algorithmic, Substance Painter, resources, shelf, algorithmic environments, and then within here you'll see that we have a set of environments. And in my case, I'm going to use this Corsica Beach EXR file, so we'll import this. Now we have this texture, let's come over to the inspector and for the texture type, I'm going to set this to cube map. And here I'm going to make sure that glossy reflection is disabled. So now that I have this, let's click apply. So now let's create a new material. So here I have my materials folder selected and I'm going to create material and I'll call this skybox. And here for the shader, we're going to set this to skybox, cube map. And let's take our cube map and just place it here in the cube map input slot. And we're gonna leave everything at default for now. So let's come back to our lighting tab and let's take this new skybox and just replace it. So now we have our new skybox and our scene is set up. So now we can start to import our assets. Let's start with the substance. So here I just have a blank substance directory. Let's right click, import new asset. And here in the tutorial files, you'll see a substance directory. And let's choose rock ground SBS AR file and we'll import. And so here we have our substance in our project. Next, let's start to add our ground. So here in my meshes directory, I'm going to right click, import new asset. And here we'll go back to the tutorial files, meshes, and let's start with ground. So we'll import. Now with the ground selected, I'm gonna come over to the inspector tab and I need to change this scale factor. So as I discussed in the previous chapter, I used Maya and Maya has a different scale factor than Unity. With Maya, I was working in one unit is equal to one centimeter and here in Unity, I'm using one unit is equal to one meter. So I can easily do that conversion here in the import settings. So my scale factor going from centimeter to meter, I need to change this scale factor to 100. And so now that I have this set, I'm going to leave everything else to, at default and click apply. So now I have the ground and when I drag and drop this into my hierarchy, it's going to be the size that I need it to be. Now here for my rotation, I'm just going to change this to 180. Here I have my camera. I haven't set this up, but I want this area where I'm going to put the vehicle to be towards the back. So for now, we're going to keep it like this. Next, we're gonna to start to work with the substance. But before we do that, I'm gonna grab the soldier and I'm gonna add this to my hierarchy so we'll have a bit of a reference. Now for the scale, I'm gonna set this to two by two by two. And here I'll just position the soldier. Okay, so now we have just a bit of reference here. And like I said, I next want to work on the lighting. So let's do this. Let's come over here to our skybox. And for the rotation, I'm going to change the rotation because I would like the lighting here to come from this general direction. So here I'm just adjusting the rotation 
And here you can see that this is where the sun is. So we're going to uh, just set the rotation here. And now we're going to grab our directional light. And here I'm changing this to global. And I'm just going to move this. Now, this is a directional light, so translation doesn't have any bearing. But I like to try to place the light here in the general area just for a visual cue. So now I'll go into rotation mode, and I'm going to start to just rotate this light. So here on the soldier, I noticed the head looks a little funny. Uh, let me just come over here to uh, my materials for the soldier, and let's look at the head material. I think here by default, yes, it has uh, an emission set to white. So here, let's just turn this all the way down. Okay, so this is just kind of the uh, kind of basic reference here that we have. We've got uh, the soldier in place, we have our ground plane, and here we have our lighting set. So now let's come over to our substance and let's apply our substance to this area. So here I'm just going to apply the substance, uh, the material to just these two sections here. And as I mentioned in the blocking video, we want to t adjust the tiling here to be five by five. And so now that we have this, I can come over to my substance parameters and just start to make a few uh, changes here to the parameters that we published. So for instance, uh, the puddle contrast, let me just bring this value down and maybe decrease the puddles, something like this. Uh, let's just play around with the dirt. Now I want to come here towards the top and for the height map I want to adjust this value so I'm going to move this all the way up to 0 0.08 and this is going to just give me that parallax effect. So earlier I mentioned I'm using Unity 5.4 and there's a few extra options here under the smoothness control. So here you can see that we have highlights and reflections and these options are for performance so that you can disable per pixel lighting. In our case here we're going to leave them on but something like this is good to have. Uh, as a control for optimizing for mobile platforms. So here I might go back to my directional light and uh, again I think I'm just gonna just move this down a little bit just so I can see the icon and let's just uh, play around with the lighting just a little bit more. Okay so here we have our substance and now I'd like to start to make some variations on this substance. So let's select the substance and here I'm going to click the plus button to just create a new material. And so here you can see that I have a new material. If you want, you can come in and rename this, but I'm just going to leave it here at uh, just that default name. So let's drag and drop this substance here into this location. So uh, here I'm just going to instance this guy into a couple different locations. And let me just back out and just place it now here and here. Okay, so let's just kind of leave it like this for now. And so we'll start to kind of zoom in to where the angle we're going to place this. So uh, let me grab my soldier and I'm going to move mode local and I'm going to move uh, this asset forward here. Because again, I'm just trying to frame up, you know, the overall perspective view of what the player would have, you know, what we're going to actually set up here for this demo project. So here we'll have something like this. And so here I have this substance and, you know, I'm going to actually leave the tiling maybe at one. So I am I'm just by keeping this at a lower tiling, um, I am creating the overall effect of just having a different scale. So a little bit of variation here. Let's come over to the actual parameters and for the puddles, I'm going to decrease these. And let's just decrease the contrast somewhat. And again, let's come back up to uh, the height. Let's make sure that we have our height enabled here. And maybe back down the ground dirt. Eh, we'll leave it something more like this. Okay, so 
I'm going to leave that uh, that substance uh, with these parameters. Now, notice here that we're also getting just a really sharp seam here in the contrast between the two substance settings. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize some of our rock assets that we created uh, basically to place around in the scene and actually hide these seams here. So we'll uh, fix that a bit. But for now, we're just going to continue on with what we have. So here, I'm going to grab uh, this ground, uh, this, this second version here, and start to add this guy. And so the area I'm kind of placing the character, we're going to have these smaller kind of rocks like this. Okay, so I have the substance placed, and now I'm starting to kind of just think about what I want to do here in this area. So let me just take a look. Let me just place the substance. Uh, actually, this looks pretty good. I'm just going to reuse this substance here, I think. So let's do this. All right, so we'll kind of put this, uh, just, again, just kind of frame up our angle. Let's take a look at what we have so far. And this is looking pretty cool, so we're going we're gonna to go with this so far. Now that we have our substance in place uh, for our ground, I need to start to add in some reflection probes. So let's start that by just creating uh, an empty game object. We're going to use this for organization. So here I'm just going to zero out the transform. And uh, let's rename this guy here. And we'll just call this uh, reflection probes. All right, so with this selected, let's go to Game Object, Light, and let's add a Reflection Probe. And we'll just place it here underneath that Game Object. OK, so now that we have this guy, and uh, I'll tell you what, it might be easier if we just take this. Let's go into our top view, and let's just move over into this area here. And we're going to place this just kind of in one of these quadrant areas. So let's come over here to our ground, and let's take a look at uh, one of these quadrant areas here. So where do we have one of these guys? Uh, here we are. So here, we'll do this. Let's take uh, this guy here, just so we can see how we're going to set this up. Let's, let's hide these, and let's grab our reflection probe. And like I said, we're going to move it over into this area, and I'll just hit F to focus. OK, so here for the uh, resolution, uh, I want to set this to 512. And here, underneath my lighting, I actually have just this auto bake enabled, so I don't have to worry about hitting the build button. And so we have this, and for the size, I'm going to set this to something like, say, 20 uh, by 20 by 20. And here we'll just position this. Let's jump over into like an orthographic view, and let's just move uh, this up on the y-axis. And let's go back into perspective, or actually our top view, and let's see what we get. Um, actually, for the size, let's just overlap it a little bit. So let's do 21. So here we go, something like this. So here we have a probe in place, and we're just going to duplicate this probe because we want to keep all these same settings. So let's go back to our ground, and let's re-enable these guys. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this probe, and I'm just going to duplicate it here across my scene for each of these sections. And you know, the more I think about it, I don't think I need to have that many probes. So uh, let's probably do it more like this here. Um, let's look at it in the sense of just making a probe that's probably uh, maybe around this size here. Okay, so that's going to work for me. And now I'm just going to duplicate this probe just to kind of cover uh, the area here of my scene. So now we have the reflection probes placed in our scene. Next, I'd like to add the vehicles. So let's come over here to Meshes and right click and let's import a new asset. Here in the Meshes tutorial file directory, let's grab this vehicle underscore low and import it. So as you recall in the previous video, I pre-scaled this asset so that it matched the blocking scene. So with that, I know that I now need to change the scale factor to 100 
and I'm going to leave everything else at default and we'll click apply. So now let's take this vehicle and just drag and drop that here into the hierarchy. Okay, so now that we have this in place, uh, let's just uh, go through and just kind of translate this object here into this area uh, where the mounds are. So I'm just going to place the vehicle. Let me just kind of come back here to the uh, angle that I'm kind of working with here so I can get this. All right, so we'll go with something like this for now. And uh, I'm going to go back to my substance here. I need to go in and change my resolution. So I left that at 512. Let me override here for standalone. And let me change this to 1024. And we'll click Apply. And let's also change the resolution here for this second variation. So here, we'll come in and we'll override for standalone, and let's switch this to 1024 as well. All right, so at this point, we'll just kind of close out this video. We've added our vehicle and our soldier, and we will add the textures for these assets later. In the next video, we're going to uh, pick up here and continue to build up our environment by adding the rock assets that we created.